This meeting is being recorded. Okay, guys, we're here among the stones with Mike Saffel and Jason Dingy. Tell us a little about yourselves. Actually, it's Dingy. Dingy? Yeah. Dingy. So, uh, yeah, mine. Yeah. <laughs> um, tell us a little about yourselves. Um, I got started in GRIP. Oh, I think it's about six or seven years ago. I was doing some strongman stuff, and all the strongman contests I did, it just seemed like, well, I wasn't very strong for, for one thing, but all the, um, the grip intensive events, I seemed to excel at. So did a grip contest, won it, um, and then was doing a, doing a local strongman contest one day. I met Chad Clark. Um, Chad Clark said, hey, you need to check out Arm Lifting USA. And from there, it just turned in. I started having contests once I got my gym and got him involved. He started winning right off the bat. So that's about, that's my journey into grip. <laughs> okay. And Jason, how'd you get involved into grip sport? Well, I started doing grip way back, like, uh, 2001 2 I got into strongman and I got some uh I had a subscription to Milo you remember that magazine? oh yeah uh -huh. so I got that and saw captains of crush in there and got got a few of those I think I got a one and a two the first time closed the two that day then I think I got a three and a four after that and I got a hub and a rolling thunder way back then and uh, use it every once in a while, but I didn't, you know, didn't know anybody else was doing anything with it at the time. Then I did strongman for about a year and had a, uh, had my first knee surgery after, let's see, in 2004, after about doing a year of strongman. So that pretty much put an end to that. Then I didn't train just sporadically for the next, I don't know, 15 years until he opened up a gym in 2018 and said he's going to have a contest. And we started training a couple months before the contest for it. And that's how it, how it went. Oh, that's awesome. I got, I partly got into grip because uh, I really like doing the, we, we got strongman stuff for our gym initially and started doing that. And then I, I did a strongman contest and so did Adam and it beat me up because I'm probably too old to even get started into that. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. like the grip sport is a lot of fun because uh, I feel it's a whole lot safer on the body for sure. Yeah. No, but I remember you were saying 2002, that's right about when you were getting your first grippers in high yep. school. I was like 14. So I remember seeing it back when you were talking, just starting growing up and then just knowing it and watching strongman pretty much growing up our whole life and then wanting to do it you know ourselves yeah i discovered the grippers the same so. way in uh milo magazine and same situation ordered them way back before uh all this stuff got big i was on the grip board you know 10 15 years ago or whatever and uh that's where i learned about like how you know how to train for it a little bit more but yeah i've been chasing the number three for a long time on that Definitely. Yeah, it's a lot of I fun. Think the, uh, I think about the early 2000s, that's probably about the same time he got uh, dinosaur training from Brooks Cubic. Yep. Okay. And that's where he got, yeah. got everything started there. Awesome. It's yeah, he yeah, often you know, have an emphasis on thick bar and uh, grip work in that book. Yeah. Yeah. So how often do you guys uh, train grip nowadays? I do three days a week. Mm, I do two, occasionally hit three. I'm a little lazier on grip than he is. <laughs> I guess it probably shows in my performance, especially in King Kong just the other day. But that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, King Kong is a fun contest. That one really tests the grip a lot more than I'd say uh, like Super Series or uh, – the arm lifting one that we do. I mean, that the King Kong, those specific grips like the finish ball, grab ball, those are tough. Yeah. Those are challenging. My thumb seems to be my weak link in 
all my grip stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. When you're doing a finished ball and the flask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been working on the pinch quite a bit. I did okay. But, but man, it's tough. I really think I just have to train the left hand on some <laughs> implements. It, it's nice to be able to switch hands. Doing that definitely helps. No, I think that oh, thumb's going to impair me because my so, hand's um, like an inch bigger. <laughs> what a company work. I know, Jason, you do a lot of thick bar, like bench pressing and uh, see a lot of training in your work, like from the Kubrick, Jason, uh, you said the Kubrick book, the Brooks Kubrick. Um, I've read that book and he has that bench press that's the bottom up with the thick bar. Yeah. I've seen you doing that training. What a company work do you think helps with your grip the most? Company men work outside of grip. Outside of grip? Yeah, outside of grip, what do you think like accompaniment has helped out with your grip training the most? Yeah, what transfers over the most? I don't know, not really any of it, I'd say. I mean, it doesn't, I don't use, it doesn't seem any, really any harder to use a thick bar benching than a normal bar for me. I can pretty much do the same amount on a three inch bar as a one inch, so it doesn't really. I don't get anything from that really for grip. I don't think. Okay. Maybe some on the wrist, but. See, yeah, it definitely kills my wrist when I try to bench the fat bar that. like that. Well, you got to do. I mean, you want to be good at two inch axle. You got to do two inch axle. Yep. You want to be good at two and three eighths. You got to do two and three eighths. Even though I've gotten a lot stronger on two inch, and then I like last year maybe I tested got out my two and three eighths axle. And I thought, oh, I'm going to go up 20, 30 pounds from when I use it like a year before. No, I went up five, maybe 10 pounds, but it's, you got to use the specific size you're trying to get better at. It seems like there's not a lot of carryover in the, in different uh, sizes for, for me anyway, I think Mike's seen the same thing. Yeah. I'd say, uh, if anything, accompanying lifts, farmers walks maybe. Um, okay. Yeah, that's probably about it. Is farmers walks for me? Um, some holds with some different stuff, but that's. If you want to get good at the equipment, use the equipment. Um, but there are a lot of rock climbers that seem to be excelling in the sport. Um, some Highland Games athletes, they're they're getting a little bit better. Um, what they're doing, I have no clue, but, <laughs> but yeah, it's... yeah, we've seen, uh, we saw a rock climber recently at our contest we did, uh, for Kong, um, Tammy McClure. Yeah. And she destroyed it in her weight class. She's, uh, yeah. definitely got a serious grip. That was really fun to watch. We've noticed rock climbers tend to carry over pretty well into the grip sport. Yeah, one thing they're good at that we uh, wanted to bring up, uh, and somebody actually asked us about this, is you incorporate a lot of pull-up training in your uh, your routine, Jason, um, and you're a pretty big dude. So uh, how important do you think the pull-up training is to your uh, your programming? Mm. Uh, it's good, but I haven't, I haven't really done any since my bicep tear last year. Yeah. I haven't got back into it yet. So I don't know. It's yeah, it's it's good. I mean, it's definitely good to do. I should probably start trying to do that again. Yeah, you're the only. I mean, you're by far the heaviest potato pull up we have. No one's got anywhere close to that added weight or anything. Yeah, that was a killer feat. Yeah, it was tough. <laughs> I don't yeah. think I'll be trying that again. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't recommend it. No, that's brutal on the fingers, man. That was that was pretty awesome. So, um, what's your favorite grip implement to uh, train on? Mm, axle, I'd say. Okay. Iron mine axle. That's a yeah. I'd say Saxon bar for me. Yeah. Used to hate Saxon bar, but now my numbers are actually moving. So. <laughs> now because my wrist fun. is a lot longer. So. So what do you, what are your uh, goals coming up next year? You guys, I mean, you now that you're hosting events and things, and sounds like uh, you just recently got into grip full time, Jason. At 2018, what's your upcoming goals? Are you looking to 
just keep winning or get numbers up or? Yeah, I mean, I want to get 440 on the axle. That's the next one. Going to Vegas here in December for the arm lifting uh, world championship. So hopefully I could do it then. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know, about 275 on Saxon Bar. That would be good. Well, we definitely look forward to watching that. So, so um, what tips do you have for people that are like new to grip that want to run a, a grip contest? What uh, tips do you have for running comps? That want to run a comp? Um, I say get a hold of someone that's done it. Um, pretty much everyone in grip sport or arm lifting USA. Everyone's friendly. Everyone's looking to help. Uh, everybody wants to promote the sport. Just get in contact with any of us. Uh, I asked around. I didn't really have any experience running anything. Um, had just opened my gym that year, so I had no clue how to do anything. <laughs> Some people say I still don't, but but yeah, just don't be afraid to ask somebody for help that's done it. It's yeah, and you're going to make mistakes first contest. I'm on my fifth year of contests and I'm still making mistakes. Just ask Jason or my wife and she'll tell you, but yeah, just ask around, um, try to make it simple. Don't try to do too much and it's fun. <laughs> yeah, it is a lot of fun. I, uh, I quite enjoy the feats. I think like hubbing 45s, tearing deck of, decks of cards, uh, trying to pick up the blobs, those kind of feats. I quite enjoy those a lot. Uh, what feats do you guys enjoy doing or are you chasing after? Uh, I'm still trying to lift that uh, inch dumbbell. Yeah. Yeah. yeah both I'll, of us are still I kind of struggling that. with yeah. that. Adam's got it like hovered a little bit and it still slips in my, my grip every time. I've gotten a, a 70 kilo inch. 154 pounder, but no, I, I struggle. Our, our, our actual inch is an 80 kilo one. So it's a little bigger than the, the 172. It's like a 177. So yeah, it's heavy. Yeah, it's tough. I, I can't get close to that. I was getting close last year. Then I tore a hamstring or pulled a hamstring. And then that was kind of the end of my training for that. And now I can't do much with it. So need to get back on that one. That's about my only grip feet goal right now. Um, finally hubbed a 45. Um, so then I haven't touched it since then. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun one to chase down. Watching him do the inch all the time. It's like, <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> so. Yeah, we got a couple guys over here that can do it. Make it look like a toy. It's yeah. easy. Just pick it up three feet off the ground. You're like, oh, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> What uh? Yeah, what pick it up and drink a beer with it? So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like it's easy, yeah. <laughs> um, what feats are you chasing, Jay, uh, Jason? I know you're getting pretty close on the four at one point, weren't you? Uh, yeah, I closed a a choked four, an easy one. Choked down to I don't know, it's about a, a little under twenty millimeters. Okay. But I haven't been doing grippers lately. Uh, yeah, I, I only do them one, once a week. It's kind of hard to, I think if I want to get much farther, I have to like specialize, like take away from other stuff to do it. And I don't really want to do that. That's what I've had to do this past year to chase the three. That's what yeah, I, I was gonna really, say. really tried to focus that. on, yeah. And yeah, I've definitely dropped off in a couple other areas for sure. I have no idea where my axle is at, but I'm sure it's fell down. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, pick more is more important to me. And so I'm not, I don't know. There's always another contest coming up. So if there were none for a while, I might chase a grip or something. But there's just always another contest yeah. coming up, seems like. Yeah, about every two or three months, seems like there's something something going on yeah pretty much that's exciting we've run yeah, super series kong and a couple other ones it's fun 
the Arnold coming up. So yeah, that'll be yep. early, Arnold's a great time. Early in the year. Yeah, I'm sure it was. We've seen people compete, rooted on people from in grip sport. So yeah, we've had a few people from our area go pretty far, go to the Super Series Championship. We had uh, Brittany Walling go there. Yeah. Uh, Joey Stamp, he got invited. That was pretty cool. So we've had a few people from our area do it. We've only been running comps up here for a couple of years now, but uh, we've gotten a decent turnout. We got a lot of climbers and obstacle course racers that have showed up for the sport. They have a pretty good foundation for it, especially in the lightweight divisions. We don't have too many uh, obstacle course racers around around this area. But that'd be uh, something cool to get, not me personally get into. I'd like to see Jason do it, but yeah, I'm thinking. <laughs> <about it. laughs> Absolutely, Jason would kill it. Yeah. <laughs> have you guys ever been to the Arnold? I have not. No. no. It's a. Uh, it's a pretty good time. Get to see a lot of spots for uh, not a big price. A lot of different yeah, sports. That's cool. That'd be fun to go. Yeah, a lot going on there. Yeah. Yeah, they had a nice setup last year with the arm lifting and the moss wrestling. We had a nice area. A lot of people watched. Yeah, it was really cool. I tuned in and watched oh, that. It was a great setup. Hanging out there watching us. It was good. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, moss wrestling is tough as heck. That is a brutal sport. Yeah, it is. I did. A, I've only done a couple matches so far, but man, I was in a match with a guy that lasted like about thirty seconds, and that killed me. <laughs> that is just brutal. He was definitely stronger than me, and that his deadlift was stronger, but I think my grip was stronger, so it was an even match, and it was it was just mean. <laughs> yeah, that sport just looks like an injury waiting to happen for me. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. It's enjoyable for a couple of matches, and then you're like, no, I don't want to rip my arm off or anything like that. Entertaining to watch, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. It's a lot of fun to watch that. We've seen a couple of guys get flung over the board oh, there. No. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> I'm surprised there's not more uh, broken ribs and things like that hitting that board in the middle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, are there anybody that, uh, that you guys follow in grip that uh, inspire your training or that you guys are watching that you think are um, good examples of uh, – they show good examples of training on their Instagram or on their on their profiles that you think are, you know, good people to watch to get into to follow if you're getting into grip? Oh, sure. I mean, Adam Glass, uh, mm -hmm. Joe Hodgson – he puts up a lot of stuff. Uh, I mean, there's a bunch of them. Jed Johnson. Um, I mean, it's not. It's not. They don't do stuff though that you're gonna jump in and do it though. That's you know high level. Yeah. Stuff. Oh yeah, absolutely. Of course. I think uh, Zachary Mullins has been uh, killing. Yeah, it lately. Zachary does a lot of stuff. Zach's been yeah. killing it lately. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Been, yeah. Uh, Clint Ziegler. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think those guys are absolutely killing it. Zach's definitely going to smash a lot of records in grip, I think. He's just – he's been moving up like crazy this past year. Yeah, it's pretty awesome to watch. Yeah, I met him at Nationals uh, this mm -hmm. year. Good guy. Yeah. That's a nice thing about this sport. Everybody's friendly. Everybody wants to talk to you. Um it's just, it's nice. <laughs> it's well, yeah, I noticed a lot of people are, uh, a lot of people that do it are either uh, came from another sport or had a primary focus beforehand. Like Jason, you did strongman beforehand. And uh, a lot of people that I've met in this sport, they, they don't really have a chip on their shoulder anymore. Their competition, like they're, they're a little more relaxed with it. They're not as, uh, I don't know, not as edgy with uh, that competition element. It's nice. Mostly guys just yeah. hanging out, drinking some beers, and having a good time. Yep. Got to mention Tim Butler for the drinking while you're competing, though. Oh, so. Tim, yeah. Tim. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's a yeah. great time. I love competing with that guy. <laughs> Tim's awesome. 
He also did pretty well in King Kong this past yeah. weekend. Yeah, yeah he's, he's well, he he's kills on a little bighorn. I mean, yeah. I've seen his little bighorn lift hit it's just crazy numbers. So I imagine that he's top of the top of the heap in that lift. Yeah, he well, he first, won. Came, yeah, he, he I came in yeah. first. King call. Did he? That's awesome. Yeah, I think it was like two forty nine or something like that. I think. Jeez, that is so it crazy. Been, it might have been a lot higher than that. But yeah, it was. It was at least yeah. that. I know I saw him do 100 kilos not too long ago. Yeah, I think it was something about that. Yeah, he's done over 250 in his training yeah. several times. Yeah, he's a monster on that on that little bighorn for sure. So, um, I guess uh, I guess we pretty much covered most of our questions that we normally yeah. ask. Yeah. So, do you guys have any questions for us, Couch Potato Strong, while we have you here, or anything else you want to? Uh, say for the beginning gripsters or people that are just getting into the sport or anything like that? When I started, I, uh, I became a coaching client at Jed Johnson's mm -hmm. right away. I realized it was going to be different. normal weightlifting. Just, I mean, you're not going to be doing the same sets of reps. So it's not going to work mm -hmm. at least for me anyway. So that was probably the best thing I did working with him. Learned a lot right away. Worked with him for about two years, and it paid off. Glad I did it. Yeah, I just started working with a coach uh, like seven, seven, eight months ago, something like that. And it's, I've made steady progress the whole time. It makes a big difference. Yeah, just somebody else looking at your, looking at your, out, out, you know aside from you has a different perspective on it and helps. I'm starting to dabble a little bit more into isometric stuff. Um, not sure how that's working yet, but I'm just getting started with that, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, keep us updated for sure. So hopefully I'll have some numbers that, uh, prove something's working. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It can, it can be struggling sometimes in grip when you don't know if your program's doing anything. I've did that with the grippers for a long time, you know, changing up what I was doing, doing holds for times, doing coin holds, strap holds, this or that or whatever, and never had any idea if I was making a lot of progress because I couldn't, you know, I was attempting bigger grippers than I could actually do. And that was, wasn't doing much was trying to figure out if I was getting this close or this close or this close or this close. Didn't really do anything. So getting a coach has definitely helped quite a bit. Especially when that does it a lot longer than you have. Yeah, yeah. those guys that have been in grip a long time. Yeah, absolutely. Like Jed, you mentioned, has been in grip a long time. He's a great coach to yeah. work with for sure. He's got Adam Glass has put out a lot of good information. Yeah, Ricardo right. has. I uh yeah, he was one of the first things I grabbed when I got into grip was I ordered one of the Adam Glass DVDs from back in the day. Yeah. And that helped out with me getting into my training for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so there's a lot of... yeah, he has been doing it for a long time. There's a lot of good info out there if you just look. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, the grip board has some good info on on there. Yep. Yeah, 100%. Uh, that's... I think where I first figured out how to set a gripper was through people discussing on the grip board and finding the uh, Paul Knight video, how to set a gripper. Yeah. I had no idea back in the day when I first got my first grippers. Yeah. No, I, you know, I had no idea that you could even like, I, I thought it was probably cheating if, you know, if you used your other hand to help set it. Yeah. yeah. I'd never, I didn't know anybody that did them had them. I've never read any, you know, I, I didn't know what I was doing. So, Yeah, that's how I felt when I got my first grippers. Uh, I had a number one that was single stamped back in like 2000 and I couldn't close it and I had no idea I could set it. I would just, you know, table no set, try to squeeze it as hard as I could, as far as I could. And that's all I was trying to do. So yeah, that didn't yeah, get me very far. You learn how to do that. Mm-hmm. And the training that wasn't provided with them, obviously, was nothing. It was like, try to do sets, and then if you can do this many reps, go up to the next number. 
That was pretty much all they told you. Yep. Yeah, the Milers yeah. didn't really have much info on it. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, it's, I'd say group sport is in the past 20 years, how much it's evolved with how much information is available and training information, how easy it is to get into the sport is, is tremendous to think what the guys accomplished that the guys that are on the number four list, like what they accomplished, the ones that outside of maybe like Magnus Samuelson, it was just obviously a gigantic monster with the strength of a mountain, you know, um, but like Tommy Heslep and a couple other guys that are on that list. It's just crazy what kind of training they must have put into and what knowledge they had to, you know, dig out of of strength to find how to do that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Back in the early days. Yeah. All right. Did you have anything else you wanted to say, Adam, or ask? I got nothing else. You know, we appreciate your time coming on. Thanks for joining us for sure. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. You guys have any more contests this year? Um, no, we're going to be uh, running like a grip sport vendor, vendor like info booth at a strongman comp coming up, just trying to get more people into the sport. So we're going to be setting up like a fat bar, a Saxon, some grippers there, rolling thunder, just try to get people uh -huh. uh, excited about it. Yeah. So that's going to be the ugly sweater contest. We're doing that December 3rd, I think. It's first Saturday, December, I believe. I believe so. Um, so yeah, we're going to be doing that. And then next year we'll be running uh a national qualifier for arm lifting USA, which will have the four main lifts, the axle, the Saxon, the silver bullet and the rolling thunder. Yeah. And then we'll be running super series in King Kong again next year. Awesome. Yeah. I'm putting on a contest, uh, November 19th. Okay. Um, I'm going to dual sanction it, um, through arm lifting USA and grip sport. It'll be the, uh, everything to a lockout. This will be my fifth year doing it. Um, Axel, Rolling Thunder, Silver Bullet, and Little Bighorn. Okay, awesome. That's exciting. And you guys are in the whole Ohio area. Yes, we're about two hours from east of, uh, or yeah, two hours east of Columbus. Awesome. Well, we wish you the best luck with your comp. Thank you. You too. All right. Well, thanks for joining us tonight, guys. Have a good night. All right. There we go. Take care. All right. Bye.